you know, I'm impressed each time I see the ship again. You know, it's it's so unique, and I think if you see it the first time, it's just very impressive to see this vessel with the rig, and you see there's something going on on that in that place with that many people who can live on that ship. To be here on this boat myself for the first time, it's amazing because you, re you really understand the magnitude of the science that is happening and has happened here. And as a scientist, it's, it's really remarkable to be in such an environment and, and on a vessel that has been so significant to Earth science. It's a floating ocean lab. I felt it the moment I stepped on board this ship for the first time 20 years ago, and I, and I feel it today. That's my ship. The Atlantic Ocean, just south of Newfoundland. For scientists, the Newfoundland ridges are where some of the Atlantic's most interesting ocean floor sediment drifts are to be found. And among them, the key to unlock the mysteries of past climate change. We go back in history here and look at a time where, the, where we know the climate was extremely warm. And we found a place that the principal investigators of this expedition have, through many years of work, they have found this spot where we have a, an archive in the ocean sediments that we can read and we can, we can learn about the relationships between the oceans and the atmospheres, temperatures and chemistry. Uh, that is really the main topic. On board the scientific drilling vessel, Joydis Resolution, affectionately called the JR by many. An international team of scientists is joining forces to recover sediments from the Paleogene period. This is a fascinating era in the geologic past when the Earth was a lot warmer than today, but somehow changed to something closer to our current, much cooler climate. The Paleogene, this period of time that we're studying that's from 66 to about 23 million years ago, looked very different than today. There were large tropical oceans and subtropical oceans, and polar oceans were much smaller. But as we progressed through this time period and we got closer to where we are today, those tropical oceans closed and, and polar oceans opened up, like the Southern Ocean and here in the North Atlantic where we are. The oceans got wider and deeper. So the focusing and transport of heat on the planet by wind and by water was much different at the beginning and at the end of this Paleogene period. And so that's, that's really interesting because it feeds back into these climate change events that we're studying, to trying to interpret and understand these climate events that we're uncovering in these ocean cores. The mission? To understand how the Earth changed from this warm greenhouse world into a cooler one with large polar ice caps. The sediments of the Newfoundland ridges hopefully contain enough detail to determine precisely what happened, when, and why. What we do is we go out and we, we make discoveries which give us a better understanding of how the world works. Uh, but those almost always build on some prior gain of knowledge from some other source. And so in our case, we're building very much on work that was recently done in the Pacific Ocean, uh, where they reconstructed also sort of how the Pacific as an ocean basin worked. And here we are working in the North Atlantic, uh, trying to understand, you know, piece together in some respects how the global picture works. By reconstructing our planet's climate history, scientists can gain insight into how the Earth's natural system reacts to changes in greenhouse gas concentrations. This is of major concern for society because mankind is releasing a lot of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere very quickly by burning fossil fuels. But the crucial question is, how much will global temperatures increase? We know that we are releasing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. We know that carbon dioxide is a powerful greenhouse gas. We can measure the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere today. And we can measure the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere in the past. So the trillion dollar question is what is climate sensitivity? What we mean by climate sensitivity is for a given CO2 forcing, how much will global temperatures respond? And that is the trillion dollar question that we are seeking to address with our expedition. Climate history is recorded in little tiny craters that die and deposit their shells in the sediment. Unfortunately on land, 
sediment is usually eroded. So if you have mountains rising up and there's sediment somewhere deposited with time, that sediment is washed down into the sea. And it's only in the sea that we actually find very uh, well-preserved and continuous records of Earth history. And even in the sea, we have to be careful where we go and we have to do a lot of surveys to find the best places where the sediment history books are extremely well-preserved and have all the information that we need. Now, when we're going into Newfoundland, we'll be going up into the Labrador current. Written down along the side. Just for a reference with regards to the currents that we'd be... Uh, working with as we were steaming to this site. You see my last position there at 0800, and uh, we're just coming along towards our first location, and then operation starts. So the, the first shot into the seafloor comes up, and everyone's all excited. A lot of us got up early, even though we weren't on shift, because we just wanted to see the first piece of sediment. It's hard to describe uh, that, that we're so excited about mud. It looked beautiful, that core. Now I'm ready to go to bed. Looking at the first sample, Dick. Yes, this is the <laughs> core catcher. We're looking for little tiny fossils about the size of a... Well, the biggest ones would be about the size of a pinhead, and they're made of a mineral called calcium carbonate. These are our primary means of indicating how old the sediments are at this stage. Extremely tiny forums. No, it's barren, completely barren. Actually, I can find only diatoms. If you take the JR, the boat itself, and you add to it all the scientists and the technicians that are on board, you can think of the JR as a true time machine. As you drill down into the ocean bottom, you're drilling back in time. And you bring these cores up onto deck, and you have no idea what time period they came from. But it's the people on board the JR that tell us that story. So we have two teams of people that are basically what I call the keepers of time. So these are the people who actually can figure out where we are in time. We hope that there are some form in there that tell us the age of the sediment so that we can get a good handle of what we really get in our course. The biostratigrapher is basically a biologist who just looks at biology and past oceans. They not only know all the organisms of their group floating about in the open ocean today, they know that for every single time period for the last 150 million years. It's unbelievable. So that gives us a first guess of where we are in time. And the second team, the paleomagnetists, um, they actually look at which way the North Pole is pointing. And so if you look back in time, the North Pole is flip-flopped, which is kind of incredible, but the, the magnetic polarity of the Earth itself has changed. And they look at those stripes, and together, the paleomagnetists and the biostratigraphers are keepers of time. So they put us in a single place in time. And when you figure out where you are in time, you actually want to go out and see what was going on in the world. And so that's my job. If you come into the core lab and we're opening one of these cores where we think is around one of these really interesting time periods where the world is changing, sometimes you open it up and you miss it. But other times you open it up and you see the world change before your very eyes. And, and that's super exciting. The first drill site revealed a series of dramatic turning points in life and evolution on our planet. However, the scientists can't always be immediately sure if they have recovered sediments from the targeted events. The reason for the excitement is that we've hit some really juicy targets. First hole, first site, three major 